Hello and welcome to our third ISL talk show. I'm your host, Benoit Coutenoir. Our topic of conversation today is transition. What is transition? Well, we could simply define it as a process or a period of changing from one state to another. But what does it mean to us in school and specifically at ISL Qatar and London? ISL London has won several awards about transition relocate and IRP for providing outstanding support to our community. So to understand it a little bit better, a starting point for our conversation today is that we want everyone to belong. Joining us, we have Ellen Jeffery. Ellen has been at ISL Qatar as its MYP coordinator since January 2012. In September 2020, however, she will be transitioning to the position of head of secondary. Now, this is a transition that Helen has prepared for. It comes, like most transition, at a set point in time, the start of the academic year. However, she, like many of us today, have had to embrace a shift in the perception that transitions occur in a single point, both in time and a school calendar. In today's COVID-19 world, transitions take place throughout a school year not just at the start or the end of the year. And we have to be in a state of readiness to adjust. Joining us as well is Claudine Akin. Now, Claudine has been a senior leader at ISL since 20, 2009, 2009. She has had a variety of roles over the years, from being the founding head of secondary in Surrey to being the head of our award-winning transition program. Well, let's begin um i have a first question um what are the different transition programs taking place at both schools at the moment uh, perhaps claudine would you like to to start answering the question yes thank you thank you ben Juan. hello helen um you know at, at isl we were inspired by doug ota he's an author and psychologist of the book you know safe passage across net works um, and in his book you know he focuses on how mobility affects people in international schools and as you mentioned at ISL our mission is to ensure that everyone in our community feels welcome and they belong and therefore we we came up with uh, following some of the guidelines that he presented which were to come up with a dedicated transitions team and to reflect on all the practices that we offer. So as an ISL group, we put at the heart the importance of ensuring that students, parents and staff all feel that they belong and are supported with their transition upon arrival, during their stay and upon departure and beyond departure with links with our you know, alumni. Some some of the things that um, we put in place, for example, were, you know, prior to arrival, we set up parent buddies who would get in touch uh, with the new families joining us before they jo before they arrive at our schools to help them plan their journey over. Uh, we did summer picnics, orientation days, uh, mm -hmm. various parent workshops. And when the students did arrive, um, we also had students there to welcome them and student ambassadors. These are all things that I'm sure a lot of schools are putting in place. And I found that many of us in the international world tend to focus a lot on the arrival. And we do a fantastic job on welcoming people into our communities. It made us reflect and ask ourselves, what are we doing for our families, our students, our, our staff? during their stay and then also upon departure and um, we made sure that the team consisted of a range of people from the school counselor to the admissions team to our languages uh, team um, our coordinators our educational coordinators we all came together and looked at what are we doing for our families and we split the roles and responsibilities 
and mm -hmm. what we and we and, and with that we were able to uh, devise a structured program for the entire school year in speaking to mm -hmm. our colleagues in qatar they've done things like national celebration days uh, we've all done international food mm -hmm. festivals and these are all opportunities to bring people together thank you very much thank you so much for 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 this um Ellen, perhaps um we could turn to you. Um, how did schools cope with helping students transition into life in lockdown? Thank you. Um, good morning, uh, Benoit, and to, to you, Claudine. At the start of the schools, good morning. At the start of the schools, life in lockdown, um, if you will. Teacher teams and all our resources, and especially the technology team, focused on the hows. I think, and the what's of technology, the tools we required, um, helping the students um, to to make sure that their internet was sound, the upskilling needed for all of us to create a life in lockdown and learning in lockdown, to create discussions. How were we going to do small group pair learning? Um, how were we going to make it as meaningful as possible? But as we moved forward, and we explored more and more, it was there was a need to connect beyond the technological. We needed to move towards the emotional. And as I reflect, and I think as all of as the team reflected, we realized that students experience and staff experience and families experience a lot of transitions in our lives. But perhaps there's been none more radical as the one that we've all had to face this school year. That of moving, of shifting from a face to face learning model to an online learning model. And there were numerous ways we could help students make that transition. Um, I remember one thing that was most powerful um, was a student online forum. And this took place with students in middle school from grade six to eight, and then a high school online forum for students from nine to 12. And we invited student representatives from mm. across the year groups to share their experiences. And all we did was to provide them with a series of prompts. And it was to really allow student voice. Um, it wasn't about teachers, it was about the students. It was about the learner and their voice. So we asked them how they had adjusted to the online learning environment. We wanted to uh, learn about what they'd learned about themselves from the experience, what they'd learned about others. How did they feel the face-to-face -face learning of the middle years program, program had prepared them to be self-directed learners? And how the lessons, how the class had actually helped them develop and grow as learners and what could teachers do that would be more helpful. So that was one case that I felt was one example that I felt really did listen to the voice of students and then we shared their responses um, to the staff. Other things, um, the student learning conversations. Now those take place um, mm -hmm. for students in October, Benoit, and then they meet the same teacher coach at the end of the year. And the students are asked to reflect upon their school year, reflect upon their learning journey since the initial meeting in October with their coach. So we take them through a conversation. Now the students lead the conversations. Again, it's all about student voice. It's about their learning story, what they've learned about themselves during this period of online. And we invited the students to recall their favorite memories, identify their accomplishments, their milestones, their turning points, their learnings. Mm -hmm. um, and those conversations like little, are really uh, important. Mm -hmm. Like a little time capsule that they would it, record. It, it, uh, it was. Uh, their it, time. And it, yes, it was a it was a time capsule. That's perfect. And and it was also a way in which student and teacher remained connected. 
you know, it was led by mm. the students and just the teacher was prompting the conversation. Um, and from that, we asked them to uh, reflect and to put those reflections in their in their reports at the end of the year. So I thought that was those are just two examples of how we've helped students to to go through the transitional from face to face to online. Thank you so much, Ellen. Thank you very much. Um, I believe Claudine, you would want to perhaps add something to to um, to what Claudine. Ellen has just explained. Thank you. Um, and yeah. uh, you know, yes, you're right. In, in addition to the experience um, at our sister school in Qatar, where we all went from um, face to face to virtual school, we we experienced having students because of our rolling admissions policy. Um, we experienced students either arriving at ISL um, a day or two before lockdown, and quite a few after. The lockdown when we were completely virtual and and, and hardly anyone at mm. school and mm. so we needed to strategize and, and and reflect on how can we best support those students with their with their transition and come up with a plan um on you know apart mm. from you know reflecting on how to get them to set up uh, their technology and 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 to be able to use all the tools that we would normally have explained in person um, more importantly was how do we support them with the well-being their well-being and be able to modify the curriculum in such a way that um, can be accessible to some learners who who spoke either very limited or no English at all, um, joining us. Special care was 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 put in, uh, ensuring that we integrated them successfully into their classes. We spent a lot of time on daily face-to-face -face virtual conversations. Um, our languages program played a key role here. So if uh, any of our students uh, uh, spoke their first language, which may not be English, uh, better than our languages teachers were there to communicate with them and guide them through mm -hmm. the process, introducing them to their house uh, tutors and uh, introducing them to their, their classmates. We also organized special platforms where students could make friendships because these things happen naturally at school, even with an assigned buddy, um, you know, walking the corridors in the playgrounds, students make their friendships naturally. But in this artificial um, and uh, uh, setup where it was new to all of us, we really needed to stop and ask, and we asked them what would they like and what would help them with their transition. It's interesting, Claudine, Absolutely. isn't it? Um, it, it? Just to inter interject how some of the things during lockdown we actually want to keep because they worked in lockdown and because you were forced to reflect on those sort of things and you found Actually, this is a really good idea. This works in lockdown. It works in that virtual world. It's going to work in the face to face world. Let's keep that and let's develop it further. Yes, what do you have particularly in mind? That's a, that's a good point, Ellen. What particularly would you keep um, uh, such as um, those important things that you found were, were actually positive during the lockdown? Benoit, I think one of the first things that came to me was that um, providing, we had a lot of meetings with parents um, that were mm. online meetings that normally we would invite parents, of course, onto the campus. Um, but it made a lot of sense. You know, um, you, you didn't have the traffic, parents were, were at work, they didn't have to get in their car, they didn't have to travel 40, 40 minutes dealing with the traffic on the road. So it, to me, I felt mm. that that was one thing that I would um, invite parents to, to make that decision. Would you like an online one? Is that more convenient for you? A lot of parents aren't able to leave the workplace um, at a particular time. So we felt that it saved time, but also more than that, it, you know, they were um, 
able to engage in those conversations at, at, at any time, but in a place where, you know, they also felt, felt comfortable to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. And I felt that was important. So I think I would invite people I to see. say, do you want to come in or, or shall we do this online? With with students mm -hmm. as well, we we um, uh, put the buddy system, and I think that was um, it. That was implemented before the child actually came into the school. So I felt that that was something that we would look at. So that a buddy system is obviously there when a child actually comes into the school. But let's do this several weeks beforehand, because it's hard for a child to come into the school when you're Thank coming you. in online. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much both. Thank you so much. Um, I suppose I have um, one more question um, and it is how important is closure? And this is something that I think um, um, we've, 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 we've sort of approached but we haven't gone into detail and it seems rather important to, 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 to look into it. So how important is closure and how have the schools addressed closure this year in particular? Yes, Claudine, would you like to start? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, I concur with, with what uh, Helen was saying also earlier about the, the changes before I touch on, on closure, which is we found that more parents were able to attend. When we set up some coffee mornings virtually, um, we had a record number of parent attendees. Of course, you know, maybe with the pandemic being as it is, people were stuck at home, but they were stuck at home working. Um, yeah. And, and having those opportunities where the community really came together, it was so important that we had, we set up the structures for those opportunities to happen and, and were very much welcomed by our, our community. And likewise, with closure, you know, leading to closure, we felt it was, it was crucial to ensure that um, we would uh, give a platform, a space for our students, our parents and our staff to have closure, especially those who are leaving, and, and especially our graduating class who are also leaving and, and, and not coming back to the school, and those who are leaving to go to other countries or not knowing where they were going next because of the uncertainty. Um, this is something we've, we've always, as you know, since we set up our transitions program 10 years ago, um, we've always, um, worked on having a good goodbye. Um, and the good goodbyes were inspired by David Pollock and Ruth Van Raken um, in their mm. book, uh, Third Culture Kids. And in that book, they introduced the concept of raft and raft and building a raft to help us move through one culture to the next or from one phase to the next. And raft stands for reconciliation, affirmation, farewells, and think destination. I'll just uh, describe briefly what that is because that is the basis of all the workshops we provided. We provided workshops through our counselor and one of our parents who's a family therapist for the students, for the parents, and for our staff. Separate workshops which were very well attended to discuss that closure, but also to discuss closure during this crisis and what it means equally the closure for our stayers, because we focus a lot on the leavers, but those of us staying behind also need closure for those who are important to us that are leaving. So with reconciliation, the, 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 the advice there is that it's important, you know, to, to, to resolve any conflicts before leaving so that you, because that, that way you're not taking the baggage with you. Mm -hmm. Affirmation is about appreciating and acknowledging who and what matters to us and being able to say the thank yous to the people who made a difference to us during our time at ISL. Farewells are also equally important because to have, to enter well into your next destination requires us to leave well and um, saying goodbye not just to people it could be to places to pets we had some families who wanted to come and say goodbye to the building to the physical building of, of our school as in, in addition to wanting to say goodbye to to their staff and friends 
And then finally, the thing destination, the T, is that only after reconciling, affirming and saying farewell, well, are we ready to put our attention to what comes next and to plan and be excited about our next uh, adventure, our next change? But but Raft is not only for moves across culture. Uh, Lind- Linda Jansen um, at the online FIGT meetup described it as a change model for tra- transition of all kinds, including times that, like now that we're in, experiencing with cha- ambiguity and turmoil during this pandemic, even not knowing what's to come next, you know, what's to come next in, in the next academic year. Mm-hmm. Um, so that sort of was important to be able to have some closure in order for us to have a good goodbye to pave the way for a positive welcome. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been an, an international educator now for, for, for many years, probably over 30 years. Um, and I'm very familiar, I think, with the with the transitional process of international students and colleagues. But, you know, it's still the end of the school year is something I, I still dread. Um, and I think this year more so than in previous years, as, as Claudine has said, there's there seems to be more students more families having to to face a period of transition, a period of of move where there's so much uncertainty. Um, And I think at those times this year, it was essential that we supported the parents, supported our students, supported our staff as they embraced Mm -hmm. the challenge, some of of another relocation. And all of us have to ready ourselves to welcome the next adventure um, in, in, in this time. And, and one thing in particular, the, the, the farewells, the farewells, the, the celebrations of the year as we draw towards the closure of the year. Um, you know, staff leaving the school, we were all invited to an afternoon meeting to celebrate um, their time at school. And, you know, at those times, you but staff had prepared poems and speeches and videos, and those were presented to colleagues. And the same was happening in homerooms as well with the students. It's take it's an emotional afternoon. It's an emotional event. But however painful it can be sometimes to bid so many fond farewells, it's necessary for those who are leaving and it's necessary too for those who are staying. We have to experience the the sense of closure because it's that which will ease us, transition us into the next stage of all our global journeys. Um, So that will ease us and ease the students and the families to their, their, their next adventure. And I also felt, okay, we're moving on to the next adventure. We're moving into the next the next school year. How is this going to look the first couple of weeks where we're not sure whether it's online, we're not sure whether it's face to face, we're not sure whether it's a blended model. Um, but I think it's really important that before we do anything, before we get on to those next units of inquiry that we explore and help the students to explore um, concepts like self-efficacy, hope, gratitude, but most of all connectedness. Um, And I think one of the things that I've seen with some of the subjects is that they are going to be looking at those areas areas of self-efficacy, self-belief, hope, gratitude, connecting us before moving into um, and into any unit of, of inquiry or unit of learning. To kind of to use those as lenses as we journey into mm. an, and I think that that um, because we all need to reconnect with one another before we go ahead and and face the next challenge. Yes, I, I totally agree. And one of the biggest benefits of of this whole 
situation we've been in has been how more connected we've been even as two schools. You know, we've always worked collaboratively, but more than ever in the last three to four months, our two schools have connected at every level. So mm-hmm. from a professional level as a colleague to another colleague, um, it's been heartwarming to find and get support, not just from our own network in, in, our, in, in London, but also from our friends and colleagues in Qatar and working together and supporting each other and, and, and being even stronger with ideas and, and, and suggestions on, on how to go through this uh, um, phase, this big transition that we're all facing. Yeah. Thank you very much to you both for this interesting and um, stimulating conversation. Um, it was um, a real pleasure to uh, to listen to you both. Um, I hope everyone um, who've been listening to us have enjoyed this um, this really interesting conversation on what seems to be the fundamental element of our approach to education at ISL and how we 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 deal with transitioning. It seems clear to me that you are both putting the well-being at the heart of transitioning. I want to thank you again both very much and also everyone involved in the making of our ISL talk show. Um, I was yours, Benoît Goutenois, and I wish you all a very good day. Goodbye, everyone.